Hi, this is Andrew Evans, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the 1975 paper by R.E. Kendall called The Concept of Disease and Its Implications for Psychiatry. Now, this paper can be seen as a response to arguments from Thomas Sass. I've already released a video about Thomas Sass, so I would recommend watching that video first because a lot of this video will be referring back to that. And in this paper, Kendall responds to Saz's claim that mental illnesses are a myth and that healthcare should not be in the business of treating them. Kendall also puts forward his own concept of illness, which is different from Saz's, and aims to show that under his definition, mental illnesses do not count as real illnesses or do count as real illnesses after all. Before we get into the content of this paper, I just want to note at the outset that Kendall does use some disparaging language to refer to certain groups, especially the way he refers to queer individuals. Um, he definitely considers homosexuality and being transgender to be mental illnesses in this paper, um, which, uh, you know, these conditions were in the DSM um, in decades past. Um, but the language he uses, it's clearly disparaging to those groups. He uses terms like sexual deviant, and he uses terms like transsexual in a disparaging way. So I just want to note that, that that's something to keep in mind as we go through this paper. Um, it will come up again a little bit later in the video as well. Um, it also points to the problematic history, right, of psychiatry to some extent, um, psychiatry was in a business of pathologizing queer individuals, um, arguably still is to some extent with um, diagnoses like gender dysphoria. So just something to note that this paper contains. Okay, so Kendall starts early in the paper with this quotation. He says, quote, it has often been suggested in recent years that there is no such thing as mental illness, that the conditions psychiatrists spend their time trying to teach trying to treat ought not properly speaking to be regarded as illnesses at all or even to be the concern of physicians he goes on to say saz is the best known exponent of this view and at the core of his argument is essentially this that as prolonged search has never demonstrated any consistent physical abnormality in those regarded as mentally ill and as their illness consists simply in ha behaving in a way that alarms or affronts other people or in believing things which other people do not believe. There is no justification for labeling them as ill, and to do so is to use the word illness in a purely metaphorical sense. So he is talking about Thomas Saz's view in his paper, The Myth of Mental Illness, and the book that um, came after that from Saz. He's pointing out that Saz um, is noting that we haven't found uh, these biological dysfunctions and abnormalities that underlie mental illnesses. And so, according to Saz, they're not real illnesses. Before moving on, um, just pause for a second and consider what do you think of this claim um, from Saz, right? So, I. Uh, Saz's major claim is that if we can't find some sort of biological dysfunction in uh, mental illness, then it doesn't really count as a real illness. Kendall disagrees with Saz. He thinks that mental illnesses do, in fact, count as real illnesses. And to argue against Saz, he defines illness differently. Now, remember, for Saz, and this is a quote from that 1960 paper, The Myth of Mental Illness, he says, quote, the concept of illness, whether bodily or mental, implies deviation from some clearly defined norm. In the case of physical illness, the norm is the structural or functional integrity of the human body. So remember, Saz is saying that this is what real illness is. There is some deviation from a norm, and that norm is characterized by the structural or functional integrity of the human body. Something must be going wrong with the body for there to be an illness. Kendall disagrees with this concept of illness, but still keeps it grounded in biological terms. Kendall thinks that illness can be understood as a biological disadvantage. 
So what does he mean by that biological disadvantage? Well, he gets it from this person named Scadding. He refers to Scadding throughout the paper. And this is a quote from Kendall. He says, quote, Scadding avoided elaborating on what he meant by biological disadvantage. Presumably, though, it must embrace either increased mortality or reduced fertility. So what Kendall's contributing in his paper is he's giving a concept of illness in terms of biological disadvantage. But he's also going one step further in defining what he means by biological disadvantage, which apparently Scatting didn't do. For Kendall, biological disadvantage is understood in terms of increased mortality and reduced fertility. So for Kendall to count as an illness, a condition, a condition must either increase one's mortality, right, make it more likely that they will die, or decrease one's fertility, make it less likely that they will produce offspring. So how is this concept of illness different from SAS's? Both SAS and Kendall consider illnesses to be biological in nature, but there is a difference in how they're conceiving of illness. Kendall notes that SAS's concept of illness is about the condition itself and its causes, right? The structure and function of the human body. So to be an illness, there must be some um, identifiable problem um, in the body, in either the structure or function of the body. Instead, Kendall's concept of illness is about the condition's consequences, right? It's about what the condition causes. Whether or, not some, whether or not the condition increases mortality or decreases fertility. So that's about the effects of the condition rather than the causes and the nature itself of the condition. If the condition uh, makes it more likely that someone will die or less likely that someone will produce offspring, then for, Sa then for Kendall, I'm sorry, it counts as a real illness. So we can apply this to mental problems, right? So suppose this person here is very anxious. Um, she has trouble controlling her anxiety. For SAS, for her anxiety to count as an illness, there would have to be something wrong with her body, right? There would have to be some problem with the function of her body or the structure of her body, um, perhaps in her brain. Maybe there is a chemical imbalance or something like that. But for Kendall, he can still call this an illness, even if there's no problem with the function or structure of her body, if the anxiety reduces her um, ability to produce offspring or um, increases her possibility of death, right? So it's this sort of forward-looking consequences view of illness. If this condition has the right consequences, then it can count as an illness for Kendall. In the later part of the paper, Kendall uses research, and I want to note this research is from a long time ago, to argue that mental illnesses do in fact increase mortality or decrease fertility in some cases, and so they should count as real illnesses. Now this is the part of the paper where Kendall um, uses those disparaging terms and definitely explicitly says that things like homosexuality and being transgender count as mental illnesses. Um, so we definitely want to avoid language like this and conceiving of sexuality and gender this way. Um, we also want to note that this research is, is fairly outdated, right? Um, Kendall's writing in the 70s. Uh, you know, it's hard to take some of this research seriously, you know, 50, 60 years on. Um, but one thing we might take from this is, you know, in and of itself, if Kendall's approach would call homosexuality an illness, we might use that as an argument against Kendall's approach. That might indicate there's something wrong with it, right? So we can even use this part of his argument to analyze the argument itself. Another thing we can take away from Kendall is that he was trying to defend psychiatry from the anti-psychiatry critique by showing that mental illnesses are grounded in some sort of biological dysfunction. And this is a common practice. As we noted in the SAS video, um, in the 60s, anti er, psychiatry was critiqued by um, uh, these anti-psychiatry theorists, including SAS, uh, including Foucault, including Lange. 
Um, and a way that psychiatry responded, Kendall was a psychiatrist, is uh, grounding mental illness in something biological, in some sort of biological dysfunction. And his biological disadvantage view is a way of doing that. And we can compare his view to that of Christopher Bors. Uh, Bors similarly thought of illness in terms of statistical deviation from some norm. And for him, the norm is understood in terms of biological fitness. So it's a very similar view. Bors talked more about physical il- or about like illness in general than mental illnesses. Kendall focused more on mental illnesses, but um, I want to note that. And the beginning of the Bolton book, men, uh, what is, or I'm sorry, the beginning of chapter three of Bolton's What is Mental Disorder book, he also talks about Bors's view as well. All right, so one thing we can do is now consider if Kendall's approach to illness and mental illness is plausible. One thing he himself points out is that there are certain conditions that seem a lot like disorders or illnesses that under his view wouldn't count as disorders or illnesses. And he brings up psoriasis. Psoriasis is characterized by sort of scaly skin rash, okay? And it maybe causes suffering, it can be treated, it's identifiable, right? We understand it scientifically to some extent. But if psoriasis, presumably, doesn't really cause um, increased mortality or decreased fertility. So Kendall says, you know, this wouldn't technically count as an illness under my account of illness. And we might think that's kind of a problem, right? If there are some things that we currently treat as illnesses, and that have treatments and that people seek out medical care for and that cause suffering, but your account can't account for why they are illnesses or it has to say that they aren't illnesses, maybe that's a problem for the account. So that's just one of many examples that we can bring up if we wanted to challenge Kendall's view. All right, I wanna end with just this short writing side at writing exercise. So spend some time thinking over these questions and then a few minutes writing out some answers. The first question is, what sort of norms must we use to understand what illness is? What are the norms that an illness is a deviation from? Second question, do you think an illness must be a deviation from some biological norm? So this is, ultimately, Saz and Kendall agree on this, that real illnesses must be deviations from biological norms. But they just characterize what biological norms are relevant differently, and they disagree on whether or not mental disorders, mental illnesses, are deviation from biological norm. And then finally, consider this question. Is medical treatment only called for when a condition deviates from a biological norm? Or are there conditions that are not deviations from biological norms that should still be treated medically? So with this last question, we're trying to keep these things separate, right? Um, Saz definitely thought if an illness or if a condition isn't a deviation from a biological norm, it's not appropriate for uh, medicine to treat it, for healthcare to treat it. But we can question that, right? Should we be tying together biological dysfunction and treatment? All right, well, that is all I have for that video. Thank you for watching.